It's impossible to talk about Danish football without beginning in the 1980s. The Danish football team was known as Europe's answer to Brazil, but a more flattering and fair comparison is probably to that of the Dutch team from the 1970s. The Danish team played a very similar way to total football, focusing on excellent dribblers, fast passing and high press football. This style of football was the antithesis of most of the European game at the time. Even teams that are known for passing football now, like Spain, used to play in a more agricultural style, more of a hacking and slashing at the players' legs. The desire to play in this way permeated all the way through Danish football and can still be seen to this day with certain players. While he wouldn't be a total match, Christian Eriksen could easily fit in with his technical ability, although the lack of physicality in his game would probably mean he wouldn't quite fit in with their style. This national team didn't really win anything, but then again, a lot of the greatest teams of all time haven't. In a poll by World Soccer to try and find the greatest football teams of all time, three of the top five teams were nothing. These were the Hungarian 53 team, the Holland 74 team, who are compared to this Danish team, and the Brazil 82 team. This Denmark team did make it into 16th on the list, which is miles above any team from Argentina, Spain, Germany, even Liverpool and Manchester United don't beat this Danish team of the mid 80s for style and substance. So this team was the initial provider of Danish dynamite, but are there any players at the moment currently active who could provide another explosion for Danish football? Well, of course, you've got Christian Eriksen, as I previously mentioned, who's been one of world football's best attacking midfielders for the past 10 seasons. Kasper Schmeichel is one of the Premier League's finest goalkeepers and Premier League winner in 2016. Pierre Hoiberg is one of Tottenham's best signings for a few seasons now and is slotted in nicely in their defensive midfield. And players like Thomas Delaney, Simon Kier, Daniel Vass and Andreas Christensen are all good enough to play at the World Cup level. While some of their younger players haven't quite made the grade, such as Christensen and Dolberg, they still do have a decent all-round team with a nice balance between defence and attack. While it's unlikely any of the players at the moment will be on the same level as Kasper Schmeichel's dad Peter, or former legend brothers Brian and Michael Laudrup, who were both named in the 125 Greatest Living Footballers of All Time by Pele in 2005 competitor for it. They still play the formation that was made famous by the Dutch in the 1970s, the 4-3-3, and with three of their best players all playing in midfield, They'll be hoping to dominate the ball and bring back some of the Danish dynamite from the 1980s. So, how are Denmark going to do in the future? As mentioned before, Christensen and Dolberg might not have reached their potential, but they're still fairly young at 24 and 22 respectively. Outside of this, they have Jesper Lindström, Morten Frenrup and Mikkel Damsgaard all having high potential outside of the first team, and 16-year-old Wahid Fagir looks like he could play at a top flight level when he finally matures as a player. To try and promote more youth in Danish football, the top flight has implemented a rule where you need to have at least four players trained at the club for three years before they turn 21, and a minimum of eight players trained in the nation for three years before they turn 21. With no squad rules at all, it's easy enough to pick whoever you want in the squads, and most teams do have at least one good young player coming through. The structure of the Danish league is also fairly interesting. Starting in the 19-20 to 20 season, the number of teams was reduced from 14 to 12, and each team played each other home and away. This resulted in 22 matches for each team, at which point the league split off into a 6-team championship playoff and a 6-team relegation playoff. All teams points carried over into the next rounds and the teams play each team home and away resulting in another 10 matches. This in total results in 32 matches for the full season, the bottom two teams qualify for a relegation playoff and the top six teams battle it out for a European spot. So this is fairly unconventional compared to other European leagues. But Denmark, in many ways football-wise, is an unconventional nation. One of the smallest nations in Europe to have such an impact as they did in the 80s, they can only really be compared to the mighty Magyars of Hungarian football in the 1950s. So, I hope you've learned something about Danish football today. I know this might not be too related to FIFA like some of my other videos, but if you do want to know a bit more about them in FIFA, let me know and I can make a video on that in the future. If you have enjoyed watching this and you'd like me to talk about any other teams or nations or leagues or anything, make sure to leave me a comment or join my Discord which I have a link to in the description and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out if I do decide to make your suggestion, which I probably will. But that's it for today's video, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one, bye!